This video is brought to you by Ravenscraft Realty of Northeast Missouri. It's a fine Friday morning down here in Columbia, folks. So I'm not actually not going to work at Bradford today because I did something stupid on Wednesday that involved an online auction and uh, now I have to go get it. So no work today, just driving to Kansas. I just have a lab for my sensors class and then we can head home. Gotta get the putter out of the shed. It's uh, March 2nd, time to get ready to go. Yeah, I just got back from hauling some corn and Robin just did some painting on our water trailer. I think we had that in a video or two earlier. We cleaned cleaned it all up. Try to get as much of the old paint off the frame as we could. Decided to go with blue. I guess that will work. It does look pretty good though. Uh, definitely better than the Oh, uh, pretty sketchy paint job it had before. We got to get this thing all put back together. Yeah, we're pulling our old homemade VT out of the shed. Actually, got some guys who are buying this. Opening's not quite tall enough to get it out all the way up, so you got to cheat it a little bit. Tires actually held air. Be glad to see this go where somebody can use it. Did a great job. Just not quite big enough for. Uh, keep up with the planters we got today. Oh, so got the first first load of uh, seed corn in for 2022. Golden Harvest varieties. First of uh, only, I believe, about 10 boxes here. We got a lot more to come. The shed is pretty much empty at the moment. We've been working some more on Putting the caulk in the floor has been warm enough to get these cracks, uh, get this project, seal these cracks up, finished up. So the bad part is right now everything is parked a little bit of everywhere outside. Got the 730, 345, 570, the ripper, combines back there, seed tender. And we made it home just fine with the Mulchmaster VT tool. Guys are supposed to be coming over tomorrow afternoon, I believe, to try to drive that thing home. There's a 7,000 planter that we moved, uh, I believe, yesterday. We brought it home mostly because we had to move it out of the way to get that out. So, driving by with the 4320, just decided to swing in, hook this up, bring it on over. 4320 runs good now those guys over at john deere checked a couple of things out on it should be good to go i put the camping the fenders back on get that done here sometime soon need to be ready for the spring for whatever it happens to actually do as far as inside the shop still got the 790 in here we haven't worked on it in over a week uh we would spend uh i don't know day day and a half two days something like that We'd have it done and out of here. We got the 9510R, we're kind of getting it ready to go. Got to take it out to Nutrien, get the ammonia bar hooked up to this. Still on the wet side, so not a super huge rush on that. We've had, uh, been working on, been buffing this hood out and waxed it. This side is done, so is the top. But, yeah, not near as shiny over here yet. Still got to finish this side of it up. We might work on the fenders a little bit too if we get get time for that. Well, at least we'll get this hood done while we got it started. Looks like the local junkyard is building a new shop so they can work on all of their junk. All jokes, of course, except I detest left-hand reversers and Case IH has one in every single one of their tractors from a lawnmower to a 620 quad track. So just take that for what it's worth. And here's the driveway. So we are home. So Justin and I are gonna move some things back into our new shed here. One of them being my 730, which I haven't started for a while. Come on, be good for me. Oh yeah, 
I never doubted her for a minute. I'm gonna get the 4320 with recently rebuilt brakes next. And Justin has the 9570RX. Let's see how she runs. Here comes Justin with the other combine. Also interesting to note that we got the John, homemade John Deere vertical tillage tool sold and it is gonna be leaving in not too long. We're gonna pull our vertical tillage tool here up to the shop and check all the tires again so that the fellows that are coming to get it uh, don't end up with a, you know, flat tire. Today is this kitty cat's first birthday. Say happy birthday to Arthur. And sadly, the fellows that came to get the uh, vertical tillage tool were not able to drag it home because it was a little too heavy for his one-ton pickup. And yes, I did get my hair cut. I know everyone was wondering that. And Dad got his truck rinsed off and the trailer hooked up. So now we can leave. Going to Kansas. Been on the road for about two hours now and uh, we're on the other side of Chillicothe on Highway 36, so. We still got a little while before we get to Abilene. We're now in uh, Topeka, the Golden Arches. Finally made it to Abilene, and diesel is uh, 4.49 a gallon. That's gonna be fun tomorrow morning. And I'm gonna shack up tonight in a uh, Holiday Inn. Oh, well, we found a Cenex here on the south side of town that's significantly cheaper for diesel. That's 34 cents a gallon cheaper down here than it was out by Interstate 70. <laughs> and I'm paying for the fuel for this trip, so. <laughs> but this fellow's place is like 20 miles south of town and we're gonna head out there. I just got off the phone with him. He said this was the best place to get fuel, so took his advice. So, sh Dad, should we tell him that I have a YouTube? Okay. <laughs> Uh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe I don't know. It could be worse. Like the fact that we didn't bring a functioning phone charger. Oops. This is something kind of odd. Very short, very wide, very old grain bin. There she is. Here's my new 4020. Loaded and heading home. This John Deere dealer right here is the place where my tractor was sold brand new. Yeah, I had to stop at a subway, just like the last five trips that we went and got stuff at. Dad and I kind of established an unofficial tradition of stopping at a subway anytime we go on a long road trip to get something farm related. We did one to get my 730 diesel, one to drop off my 730 gas, one to get the other 730 diesel, one for 4320, and then now the 4020. We're stopped here in Cameron at a Phillips 66, and I'm gonna pull over to a pump and get some diesel. We're getting closer and closer to home. My hand's a little red from white knuckling a bunch of hills in Kansas, but that's okay. At long last, we are home. That's beautiful. So, I'm sure you're wondering, how did I come across this and why did I buy it? The answer to the first question is I was on Big Iron Auction in class when I was supposed to be paying attention to what they were teaching. And uh, I just typed in 4020. And I saw this beauty and the auction was relatively soon. And I talked myself into trying to bid on it. And then my farm, the farm superintendent at Bradford, where I work, talked me out of bidding on it. And I never called the guy, never did anything. 
until dad talked me back into buying it the same day. And I bid on it and I kept hitting it and I won. I may not have mentioned it before, but this is a 1969 model year 4020. So it's got side console, 12 volt, high, uh, 12 volt electrical system, all the fun stuff that makes it easy to work on, easy to use. Got good Firestone 23 degree uh, tires on it. Got decent four rib front tires. And it's set out on wide uh, road spacing right now because the guy that owned it before me was uh, bailing uh, like hay with it. And this tractor was sold brand new out of Shouse Implement on the south side of Abilene in Kansas. And the uh, seller's father bought it brand new in 1969. And the guy I bought it from had just graduated high school in 67. So this had been around like his whole farming career. And that would make me the second owner. I'm pretty grateful. And this is a beautiful tractor. The specifics on how this is optioned out, it's got a power shift. And that alone is a pretty, it's not, it's not rare, but it's not super, super common either because most people opted for the uh, synchro range transmission on these things. And it's got two remotes. And yes, I'm gonna give this a bath tomorrow. And it came with a radio and a racket. I'm probably gonna try and pull my planter, this 7,006 row here with the 4020 this year. I've got a little, a couple things I wanna to do to it. I'm gonna uh, fix the wiring and slide the wheels in so that they'll fit down uh, 30 inch rows. But other than that, I'm not gonna do a darn thing to it other than clean it up and shine up the paint a little bit. And the f tires are full of calcium, so I'm gonna get the, that crap sucked out of there. It's got hooks for clamp-on duels. And this has a unique story behind it. So the story with this step here, it's not a factory option, obviously, but uh, the seller's dad uh, got himself hurt, so it was a little more difficult for him to get on and off tractors, and uh, they fabricated this thing, and it, I guess, works pretty well. I'm going to leave it on there because it's been on there for who knows how many years, so I think it's earned its right to stay on. And it's got a nice sticker here that says, please be careful, we love you, signed, your family. Stay alive, avoid rollovers, runovers, and unguarded PTOs. And this is an FFA sticker. That's gonna stay as well. It's got one leak. I mean, like every tractor of this age has that leak. Like the 4320 has it too. Actually, the 4320 leaks more than this thing does. It also came with two new batteries. And th there's no actual rust anywhere on this tractor because it doesn't rain in uh, Abilene, Kansas. The injection pump was also pretty recently rebuilt. And as far as size difference goes, the 4020 is a little bit bigger than the 730 and it's got like 30 more, yeah, th 35 more horsepower, something like that. Do you like my new tractor, May? I think she likes it. And I've got the, the uh, double stack slab weights on the front, so that's worth a little bit of money. Hello. The only thing that's actually wrong with this is the tie rods are a little bit loose, so I have to get that fixed. And then both of the rear rims could probably be uh, replaced because of the calcium. And check this out. The lights work. Well, not all the lights, but at least some of them work. I'm not actually gonna be physically modifying this tractor in any way because I believe in original paint, hence that thing back there. And this one's a nice tractor and it's gonna stay that way. One thing I will be changing physically is I'm gonna find a set of name spheres for this because eh, it would look better if it had them. And I need to do something different for the uh, muffler because it has an extension and the extension's kinda eh, bent over a little bit because According to the previous owner, his dad liked to uh, get it into tree rows and bend stuff up on it. <laughs> as far as things going on here in the shop, Justin and uh, one of our friends have been working on the 510, waxing it and putting a ceramic coating on it so that it looks nice forever. And Rob has been working on the 790 back there doing the, the clean grain elevator. I think that sounds right. I have never seen this tractor look this good, so huge props to 
our friend and Justin. Now here's the canopy that came with the tractor and the uh, semi-bent exhaust extension. The fellow I got it from also gave me the original manual, which is in excellent shape. Very cool. And a reproduction from John Deere. Last night we had a bit of a wind come through and uh, our one shed here at Woodland is uh, no longer in the same place. Yeah, we could basically like rebuild this. Now, there's not a whole lot left here, and most of it is now in our neighbor's field. Sick. That was in that was in the dirt to there. And so was this. One. From what we can deduce, the wind uh, got under it, and uh, that was the end of it. Yeah, just sucked the roof up. Yeah, like Dad said, that post it just kind of lifted it up out of the ground, and that was it. And the wind even stuck these in the ground pretty good. The roof for this shed is strung out over about a quarter mile. This is great. Now that we're over here on the other side of the road, we notice that there's a power line and a pole right in front of where the roof would have came over this way. So the question is, ooh, a free golf ball. The question is, how on earth did the roof of that barn get over here without taking down a power line and a pole? And stuff is spread out for like a half mile that way. Once we got over the top of this little kind of a high spot, we could see further and we got a pretty good mess to clean up. Well, we got a piece of tin right here by this stop sign and there's another piece right up there. So the roof has made it a good half mile before it finally was all apart and not going anywhere else. There's, there's a piece of shed in their shed. There is tin everywhere. I'm glad we didn't have the grain cart in here like we usually do. Now we're going to get this trailer here out of here so we don't have to in the future. I got my first round of power washing done on this thing and she's cleaned up quite a bit, but I've still got some work to do. Lots of stuff that came off the rear end. Look at that original paint. Absolutely gorgeous. Upon closer inspection, this appears to have been repainted a long time ago. This is the repaint here, and this is the original paint under that. So I'm very carefully peeling this stuff away and getting down to this. This is what we want. This is eh. Here we've got a little bit better look at the original, original paint. This darker area here is the repaint. The lighter color is the original. But there I got a little bit too close with the uh, uh, washer, but I'll get this thing completely stripped down to the original paint eventually. Here's some more. Now this is the best example of it. Original repaint. Yeah, once I get her all the way I want, it'll look pretty sharp. And I'm gonna have to look for new rims sooner rather than later. Here's our tie rods in action. They're not doing much. We're moving ever so slightly. I'm not a power shift guru, but that probably isn't good. Well, gotta shut her down for now. I parked with a valve stem up, so maybe we can figure something out this week, but got to press pause on this project for now. I desperately need to find a set of 34 inch rims that are 16 inches wide, because those are not going to last very much longer, and that valve stem is almost non-existent. I can't have nothing nice. 
It started raining, so unfortunately the 4020 is going to have to sit outside for a while. And I pulled in my truck here to the shed so it doesn't get wet. Now the 4020 is going to have to wait until next weekend when I can get back here and work on it some more. So the list of phone calls I have to make is one, two brailers in town to see if I can get the fluid pumped out. Two, see if I can find a used uh, 16 inch rim, at least for the one side for the time being. And three, I need to call the salvage yard and see if they have a pair of 34 inch, uh, 16 inch wide rims for a 4020. Those rims are not gonna last very much longer. We've had a heck of a weekend here at the farm and I hope you enjoyed watching our journey <laughs> into Kansas for a silly tractor and also the little barn escapade. That's gonna be fun. If you enjoyed it, you should subscribe. If you liked it, thumbs it up. And if you have a question, put it down in the comments. I'm an open book. And with that, that's gonna be the end of this video because I gotta go back to college for another week of learning. So that's it for this one and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Goodbye, puppy.